this is Sharon Brennan, Independent Stampin' Up Demonstrator. Um, today I'm going to show you how I make a little baker's box or milk carton for some of the craft fairs I'm doing. I've already started on my projects for the um, craft fairs for this fall. I know it's only August, but I have to get started earlier if I want to get all this done. <laughs> this actually, I cased this from Sam Donald in the UK. Um, her box is a little bit smaller. So I adjusted the sizes so that I would it would fit a little Yankee candle votive. And then I created the little window so you could actually see what flavor it is. So that's what we're gonna do today. We'll start out with a piece of cardstock that's six by uh, seven and a half inches. And if you're going to use um, DSP, make sure that you score it this way, the long side first, with your pattern going up and down. First we're going to score it at one and three quarter, three and a half, five and a quarter, and seven. We're going to rotate it clockwise and score it at one and three quarter again. Four and five and a half. Oops, knock some of stuff over. And then we are going to take our bone folder and as they like to say in the UK, burnish the score lines. Make them nice and sharp. I don't know why, but I really like the UK demonstrators. <laughs> Maybe it's their accent. Accent. I even do watch a lot of British TV. And one more here. And so this is the short side here. And you're going to cut this one here. Just along this score line, up to the first score line, cut out that little corner there. And then, this will be your front panel here. So what I like to do, most people like to notch both sides of these, but this one is going to be my bottom here. And this will be a side panel. So Cut those on the score lines up to that bottom score line. And I just notch these two, the side ones. Because I find when I fold my box in, it gives this a little bit more stability to make it square. And notch this one. And notch this one just to make them fold in a little bit better. Then, for the front of this, I am going to put in a little star window. And I'm going to use the smallest star from the Stars Framelit dies. If you can see that. I label all mine. And then I also put all my um, dies on these magnetic sheets that you can get like from Walmart or your local like Home Depot or Menards um, keeps them nice in there and I also cross-reference all my stuff this set happens to go with bright and beautiful and many merry stars which is retired and I will be right back and we'll go. okay there we go <coughs> and then we can start putting this together first we'll start with um, Putting the frame on, I use a little tumble and try not to squish too much out. This is a new bottle. Side over. 
And then your panels are all cut one and a half by two inches tall. And when I cut these, I try to get as much interest on the paper as possible. Sometimes with these little bit bigger patterns, that's kind of hard to do. See, even the back side of this paper is good. I should show you. This paper is all from the 2016 holiday catalog, which comes out September 1st. And this is actually my favorite, favorite set. I'd have to order some more. This has got the little gingerbread men and the candy canes on one side and the starlight mints. Yeah, every side is pretty. This has actually got really tiny little trees on it. It's all very festive. Every side is beautiful. I love this one. Made me hungry for chocolate when I first saw it. Little gumdrops and little hearts made out of candy canes. And again, some little tiny trees. I love that set. Anyway, now I'll finish putting this together. So I'm going to fold this over. Put some tumble along there. Make sure it's good and secure. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, here's my front. This is my back one, so I tuck this one in, makes it nice and square. I'll we'll put a little tombow in it, and then I fold down my sides. And the front one goes last, so you have a nice finished look on the front. I'm going to grab one of my candles. Christmas Eve. And I'm going to fold, tight, tuck these in like this. And I kind of like to bend that a little bit. Then, for the top part, we are going to stamp. Find my stamp here. This Mary, it is from one of the new stamp sets. I just had it. Oh, here it is. I don't know if any of you have seen the um, Jar of Love from the 2016-2017 annual catalog. It's got little fruit jars on it. I love it. This is a corresponding set for Christmas. And I'm going to use this little Mary here. I just love this. There's also one in the holiday catalog for Halloween, which I did not get. So we're going to stamp this in real red. to hold these down for just an extra second or two. It gives it a much sharper image. And then make sure you use your piercing mat underneath. It gives it a little bit more cushion and you get a better image also. And we'll punch this out with the large oval punch. Stock. We are going to punch the large oval scallop punch. And then I think we're going to just a little tumble on these. Put these together. And I have 
add, there we go, a little piece of bling to the back of it. Sometimes for these that have, when I use Tombow, I like to do a second one. Just to make it a little bit more secure. baker's box with a Yankee band um, load of candle in it. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will post the dimensions on my blog for the scoring and the size of the cardstock and the panels and everything else that I used here today. So thanks for stopping in. Have a great day. May you be blessed.